This is Bethel Pasadena Ministries from Bethel Missionary Baptist Church in Pasadena, California, where John T. McCall is pastor. We pray that this program blesses you and your family greatly. To learn more about Bethel or to sow a seed in support of this broadcast, visit us at BethelPasadena.org. Just click on the Giving tab and follow the instructions. Now, stay tuned for an anointed word from Bethel Pasadena Ministries. Praise God, praise God for this service. It's 11 o'clock service. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Praising God and reverencing Him and thanking Him for my pastor, Pastor John Terry McCall, who gave me this opportunity to stand before you today. And hello to my Bethel family and everyone who's coming in looking at this service today. May God bless you. Just blessed to be in the service. I'm clapping my hand because I am blessed to be in the service one more time. So you praise God too as this service continue this morning. I'm going to ask you this morning to turn with me in your Bible. I'm going to give you the scriptures. And it's a, a, it's a psalm, Psalm 1, book 1 of the Psalms. I will be doing the first through the third verses. Now, while you're looking for that, I'm going to say it again. Psalms 1, 1 through the third verses. While you're looking for that, I will be singing a song, praise God, this morning. Amen. And I'm, I'm, I love to praise him because he's worthy of the praise from the rising of the sun till the setting town of the same. We have a good God because I wouldn't be here at this time if it wasn't for him. He's kept me. And if you're looking at this at all right now, you're here because he kept you through whatever situation or circumstance you may be going through. So can you say hallelujah with me this morning? Can you say praise him with me this morning? Praise him and hallelujah. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, blessed Savior, He's worthy to be praise why don't you praise him praise him praise him praise him Jesus blessed Savior he's worth going down of the same he's worthy Jesus is worthy he's worthy to be praised why don't you praise him praise Blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Now, I'm going to sing this chorus again, and I want you to help me praise him. Come on, help me, church. Yes, praise him. Brought us from a mighty long ways. Praise him, oh, praise him, Jesus. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. One more time, help me this time now, sing now. 
Oh, praise him. Why don't you praise him? You need to praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, Jesus. Jesus, let's say his name. Blessed Savior, help me to say Jesus, oh, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy, worthy to, worthy to be praised. Give him some praise, hallelujah. Thank him, give him some praise, because he's worthy, hallelujah, because nobody can do me like Jesus. I just stopped to praise him this morning. Can somebody say hallelujah out there this morning? Hallelujah. And give him the thanks. Give him the thanks. Give him the thanks because he's worthy. Amen and amen. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Praise God. Praise God for the reading and the hearing of his word. Praise him, praise him, praise him, because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all know I'm a praiser. I just love to praise him. And I'm, I'm praising him for this, what he's given me to speak this morning. My topic is just one word, just one word. It's one word, my brothers. It's just one word, and it's blessed. The first word, and the first one is blessed. Blessed. And we take that word so many ways wrong. But I'm blessed. I'm going to tell you why I'm blessed right now. If he doesn't, has, wouldn't do anything else for me, guess what? I'm blessed. And if you are a son of God, a daughter of God, a child of God, you are blessed right now if you have received him, amen, as his Savior. If he does nothing else for me, I'm blessed. The word of God said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not what? You know, should, should not perish. Should not perish. And because of that, we are blessed because something took place, an action took place. Jesus did an action. His father did an action. He sent his son into the world. His son came into the world to do for you and me what I could not do for my individual self. And that's why I'm blessed because he sent his son. His son was obedient. He hung on the cross. He bled and he dies and he rose up from the grave. You know, you usually hear this at the end of the sermon, but I'm giving it to you at the beginning of the sermon because it's the most important thing about being blessed. Blessed. He did a work. He used himself. He used the body. We are blessed because we are able to move and have our beings. You, I'm, you're going to understand more what I'm talking about as I go along. He said, blessed is the man that walketh what? Not in the counsel of the what? The ungodly. Bless it, because you're not getting hooked up in situations with people who are doing, guess what? Ungodly things. You know what I'm talking about. The world is so now what used to be right <laughs> is wrong and what used to be wrong somebody help me is right you know what I'm talking about you start talking about church and now to my God and what the word of God says that the life that the lifestyles that we're supposed to live in people want to shut you up we can look at our televisions on TV wrong stuff on the TV wrong stuff on the radio I'm so sometimes I get so tired of just switching stations to find something that's edifying to my spirit our trouble, we, instead of feeding our spirit man, hallelujah, I said myself, we feed the flesh man. Somebody help me this morning. He said, but don't walk with people. Bless is a man that doesn't not walk with the counsel of the what? Ungodly. Ungodly. You have been saved. I'm talking about the Christians right now. You have been saved. I have been saved. And there are some people that we should not socialize with. 
There are some people in our life that, should, that we should just not go around. There are some people that we should not be in their what? Conversation. Because it's wrong. And because, why is it so wrong? One thing is wrong because you're changing. God is changing you. I have been saved. My soul has been saved. I got a new spirit. But my flesh is in a warfare. With my old creature and my new creature. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? That's why you can, if you used to be a drug addict, guess who you can't go around? If you used to lie all the time, guess who you can't go around? If you used to steal, guess who you can't go? People who that are doing these things. These are people that he said, what, what, kind, of, what kind of people he called that don't be around them because of their counsel, the way they talk, the way they walk. Do not be around them. Because you know, like I know, there was a time, there was a time, somebody helped me this morning, there was a time when you, like me, was living an ungodly lifestyle and we we're fighting right now, your flesh fights. It calls, try to call you back into the things that you used to do. I remember, I remember, I remember one of the hardest times in my life used to be the holiday time and the Christmas time and, and the Thanksgiving time and the 4th of July time because this was a time of years that my, I used to do, let my flesh do what it wanted to do, live the way it want, wanted to do. But I'm, I'm asking you to look with me, look at me. I, I turned, yes, I turned in my Bible to uh, Ephesians the second chapter, beginning at the second verse. Ephesians, the second chapter, beginning at the second verse. Where in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. He said, in times past, that's the way I walked. That's the way I rolled. I, I knew about the hotel over there. You know what I'm talking about. I knew about the drugs over there. You, you know what I'm talking about? I knew, knew about living a lifestyle that was not pleasing in God's sight. And he's saying, he said, in times past, you, yes, you, my sister, you, my brother, and some of you, even, even now, I'm talking about church people, even now are fighting with these different feelings of the flesh, the feelings of the desires of your heart that's not right. He, but he said, in past time on here, yes. You walk in the, like the children of disobedience. Who are the children of disobedience? The children of disobedience is the children who Satan has in their hand. They have not received Christ as their Savior, and they're walking and doing things that are ungodly. And he's telling them, we are not supposed to walk with these people. We are not supposed to talk with these people because they, they try to wake up something in you, you know? Wake up in something in you that, that is not there no more. You around somebody who's smoking, and all of a sudden you smell it. You're around somebody who's drinking something, all of a sudden it's bothering with you. Why is it so bad? People have corrosives of the liver. Amen. People taking drugs right now, a lot of them on dialysis because their body is shutting down on them for different things that they have put in. Your body, my body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we have to pray that we let it abide when the Holy Spirit that's within us speaks to us to tell us to be obedient to the word of God. We should just move on. He say, do it. Hallelujah. Do it. Because it's for you, it's for your benefit, it's for the changes that he's doing to bring about in your life. He said, um, third verse, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, the children of wrath, the children of Satan. I'm going to just say it that way. We had that nature. We had that nature. And right now, if you, my brother, you, my sister, don't fight against these things that the devil is trying to bring back into your life, you'll get caught up. And I know this for a truth. I can say it for a fact. When I'm not doing, when I don't be obedient to the word of God, my spirit grieves. That's why you know you say because you have, you, have a, you have a controller in you that God is not going to let you go so far without ministering to you, speaking to you, using his rod, a spiritual rod, to say, you my son, you my daughter, you ought not to be doing it. And we have to listen to what the word of God says. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise God this morning. Amen. 
Hallelujah, praise. And I'm so glad that I have that something within me. I have that Holy Ghost fire. I have that Holy Ghost. I have a Savior who walks with me and talks with me and tells me I'm his own and that I am not supposed to be caught up in situations and circumstances that's not pleasing in his sight and that's not blessing to other people. Why he don't want me to walk in that council, I go back to it because he want my counsel, my attitude that I'm going to be able to speak back to that brother, speak back to that sister, that I'm trying to be real with God so he can see, see a person walking in spirituality like God walked and have an example. He wants us to be an example for him. You know what I'm talking about? An example. That's why he don't want us sitting in the, uh, uh, sitting in the seat of the scum or uh, standing in the way of the sinner. We don't get in the way, in the way, in the way, in the way of sinner. What way? In the ways of a sinner. Act like a sinner. Being a carnal mind in Christian, saved, sanctified, but you're not acting like you even know God. I, I know how it is that people, I had relatives, friends, well, I know who you are. I know what you, you, what you used to. I say, yes, I'm a used to, and I'm not anymore. Amen. And you have to be able to stand up and say, I'm not anymore because Jesus is in my life. And the same Jesus, the same God can bless you. That's why that blessing come in. He wants you to change that you might be a blessing. Hallelujah. To somebody else, to your brother, to your sister, to your cousin, to the man on the street. You don't know who watching. Most people say, I don't want to be a role model. But I'm, I'm going to tell you something, whether you don't want to be a role model or not, you are somebody's role model. Somebody watching you and wants to be like you. But I hope you and I both, we have to try to uh, be like Jesus. Somebody say, be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. He said, now sit in the seat of the scornful, 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 bitter people, angry people, people who have been hurt. People who have put, been put down, the worst person to be around is somebody who has been put down, who has been scorned, and they are angry. There are bitter people. I, I remember when I was working on my job, and I come in and say, good morning. People say, person say, what's so good about it? They couldn't find nothing good about it, but they had a job. They couldn't find nothing good about it, but they was paying their bill. We pray for something, and God blesses us with, with opportunities to take care of our life, to take care of our living, and all of a sudden, there's something wrong with it. Well, I got to pay these bills. Well, did you, did you overbill yourself? Did you buy too much? Did you buy something that God never told you to buy? Did you buy something expensive trying to impress? People buy stuff to impress people. I know what I'm talking about. Your car, your expensive car, only impress somebody the first time they see it. Your house only impress somebody the first time they see it. So if you if you overspending, that's your fault because you're trying to impress. I'm blessed already. Material, we get material things and blessings mixed up. Yes, we do. I said it earlier. We get material things and blessings messed up. How is that so? A person can be a blessing by their gifts and their talents, what God has blessed them with to share with others. God gave me a job and blessed me financially to buy things, but he blessed me financially to help somebody else. My, my blessing is not the money. My blessing is not the job. The blessing is, is when I give what he gave me to help myself to help somebody else. That's the blessing. People get so caught up, they think, if hey, I don't have this like her. If I don't have that like them, I'm not blessed. No, you are already blessed. When you see that God has given you a gift and a talent to bless somebody, else you need to use that some people always use it for financial blessing but sometimes what God has done for you you need to give it away freely freely he gave freely he gave of himself freely he died on the cross freely he was resurrected you need to give up yourself of your time sometime not just to get something from somebody and have a joy because as the songwriter say I have helped somebody as I passed along the way something I said or something I've done hallelujah have changed somebody's life something I said or something I've done or something that I didn't do no more or the ways that I used to have changed has changed somebody else's life because they say well if he can do it. If she can do it, I can do it too. We need to be blessings to somebody else because of the way our lifestyle is. And if you bitter, you need to talk to God. If you scorn, you need to talk to God. Some people are scorned because they've been hurt. Some people are scorned because the, the, the boyfriend messed up, the husband messed up, you got divorced, you lost a house, you lost a job, so you upset. But you need to ask God who is who I will sustain her. Hallelujah who is our sustainer to move that anger, to move that bitterness 
away from your heart. Can somebody say amen this morning and give God some praise? Because that's when you get your peace. That's when you get your joy. When you, when you re release the people or whatever had you angry, you forgive them. And you forgive them for, not only for them, but you forgive them for yourself. When you forgive them from yourself, you are a better person. Amen. Praise God this morning. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law does he meditate how, how long? Day and night. Because Christ is in my heart and because I believe in God as my Savior and I believe that he has something greater for me, I need to look in the word of God. I need to get some scripture that I have hidden in my heart that I can pull up to make me walk that narrow way. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He said narrow is the way. There's a broad way, but people on the broad way, they're doing wrong stuff. But we need to... Be able to meditate. Somebody say meditate. Just get, get a scripture and put it in your mind. The Lord said he never. He told me in his word that he'd never leave me. And he said that he never forsake me. I don't care what the world say. And I, I don't know. I don't care what they're saying about the finances. I don't care what they're saying by the pandemic. I don't, I don't care what they're saying when I'm going to get a shot. I, I, don't, I don't care because I got the doctor Jesus. I got the best financial person, Jesus, and somehow, some way, don't get it twisted. I, you may not know where it's coming from, but we need to walk by faith in knowing that you are a son or a daughter of God, and he's going to take care of his children. And the only way we can keep this frame of mind is getting some word in us, getting some scripture in us, and meditating when, say it, night and when, and day. Meditate night and day on his word. That I am his child. I am a child of the king. And if I'm a child of the king, I'm a child of someone who has riches more than I could ever thank for. He has blessings for you. And I'm, I'm going to go back. Don't get, it, don't get it twisted by material things again. He will bless you to get material things. Why do I say it? Because he said it in, Math, in, in Matthew, the sixth chapter and 33rd verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto you. Don't call things blessings. Your ability to get things are blessing. I'm going to say that again. Your ability, your education, your knowledge that God has given you allows you to receive things. So your blessings is what he has given to you to work with. And now somebody right now, listen to me. You need to work on whatever God called you to be. If it's a teacher, if it's a preacher, if it's a musician, if it's a nurse, if it's a doctor, these are the things that he may, you need to go back and get your education where you can be a blessing to somebody else, be a blessing to yourself. But it's your abilities, hallelujah, that's open doors for you. Don't get mad at somebody else because they have achieved things in their life. The song, I know a song that I love you said, there's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. But others got up and went out to look for the job. Others got up and went out and looked for education. Others got up and did something. Their blessings was they was able to get up. Hallelujah! Their blessing was able to get up and walk out and look to find, what, find whatever the job, whatever the talent or the abilities that God gave them to be a blessing. What God has given you to be a blessing with? What are you sitting down on, my sister? What are you sitting down on, my brother? getting mad at other people because they're not helping you. What's, if you can reach out, if you have a mindset, God will use you to go further to be a blessing to you and somebody else. I am not blessed, hallelujah, just for me. He don't give me anything just for me because anything that he give me is still not mine. The word of God say the earth and the fullness thereof is the Lord. Everything I have is his. He created everything. He created the trees that I'm looking at where this beautiful edifice is that's sitting here. He created that. Yes, he did. So we need to meditate on his word night and day and let that word, that word might be speaking to you, my sister, that word might be speaking to you, my brother, that your life needs to change, that you can help somebody. Else. Some people are just so selfish. If they can't get anything out of it, they don't want to be in it. That's why you're not blessed. They'll say to you, well, what you, if I do this for you, what I'm going to get out of it? 
No, you should say, I want to do this because it's a joy that God has enabled me to help this brother, to help this sister. If you see somebody hungry and you're able to feed them, that's where the brothers come in. You feed them. You see somebody sick and you can able to take them something. Some, they can't buy their medicine and can't get you. You can buy it for them. If you see somebody need to ride, you need to let them have a ride in your car. He blessed you. To get what you got, to help somebody else, not just me, myself, and my. Some people say me, myself. No, whoever will, we need to help our brothers and sisters in need, even now today. What can you do? What can you say? Are you even, if you can't go, you can pray that somebody else go. Or you can send somebody else to go. Give them the stuff to take to him or her. We need to be a blessing one to another right now. Somebody say amen this, this morning. Amen. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. But you have to meditate on that. If you, you say you can't do it, I see people meditate all the time. People meditate so they know they can tell you all the basketball name, basketball players' name, how much scores they had. They, they put all the, the football players, what they did. They meditate all the time. They look at the soap operas all the time. It's what you're looking at that gets in your spirit. They can tell you who died, who didn't die, what time the show come on, what time it come off. But how much time do you, you, you stay in the word and meditating for a word that, that will make you feel good when you're down? I, if you, no, I'm not alone. I am alone. You know, you know, you know, if you got Christ, you're not alone. You got, he said, I will never leave you enough to say, because he's here right now. And I'm so glad I got that something with me. I got the Holy Ghost in me, in me that's not leaving me. Praise him, praise him, praise him. He will not leave you. Say it again. He said, those who are in my hand, who I got in my hand, he got strong. No man can take it away from me. That's why we are blessed because God got you in his hand. Sometimes we act like we, we are not being kept. But he got you, my brother. He got you, my sister. But you have to acknowledge it. Tell him what he said when you feel, you said you wouldn't leave me. You said your, your feet would not be begging, Lord. I need some help down here. Show me where to go, how to do what I need to do to help myself. What do I have to help myself? Somebody say hallelujah again for me. Hallelujah. He shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall also not wither, and whatsoever he does, your problem. He shall be like the tree that's planted by the river of water. And I, when I was thinking on this about a tree, the trouble is, people don't, what they don't understand about a tree, you plant a seed and the seed has to grow. And it don't grow overnight. We get upset when what we need in our life don't happen overnight. You got to school, education don't go overnight. You're a kid, you're trying to grow up, you don't grow up overnight. You don't get wisdom and knowledge overnight. Even with the word of God, you got to stay in that word to receive that before that tree to grow up that's planted by the river of water. Are you planted? You, you want to, you ask me where you need to be planted. You need to be planted in the word. You need to be planted in the word and receive from the word that, the, that you might grow up. And even when a tree first grow up, guess what? It don't have root. We get tired sometimes. We have to wait up on the Lord. Wait up on the Lord to change our life, to change our being. You wait up on the Lord and he will strengthen. He said, you shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water <clears throat> that bringing forth his fruit in his season. That's a tree. I forget the name of it. And it, 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 before it comes up, it's a hundred years. It's a flower before that flower comes up. A hundred years. But that tree does what it's supposed to do on time. Now, you don't know when your time and is what you're going to do. You know what I'm talking about? Moses, Moses was 40 years old when he thought it was time for him to break out in his ministry. He wasn't ready. <laughs> but he thought he was ready. He did it the wrong way. Then it was 40 years later when God called him and he went on and broke out. And then he lived, well, that was 40 years. But you don't know when your time is. Just because what you look for in your life, just because of what you studied for in your life hasn't happened, you don't stop studying. You don't stop meditating. You don't stop praying. You don't stop receiving what God has done for you. Somebody say hallelujah this morning. I thank God this morning that he's able to do and for us, and he will not fail us. Somebody say hallelujah again. It says, his lease also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall what? Prosper. But what, how did he prosper? He didn't wither. He didn't give up. <laughs> 
It was no fruit. He didn't get upset when it wasn't no fruit. He, the tree kept going. He did not wither. He knew that he was planted in the water. And I'm saying planted in the water. We need a plant in the word. And if God has spoken something into your life, if he's spoken something into your heart and said he's going to do something for you, he will do that for you. Because he's not a God that he should lie. But you have to have a faith and believe in his word. And what he says will come true. Wait on the Lord to change your mind. Wait on the Lord to change your heart. Whatever's in you that shouldn't be, you ask him to take it out. Whatever's blocking you, you ask him to move it. And he's able to do that. But we have to get serious, hallelujah, about his work that we might be a blessing. Somebody say blessing, blessing. Say blessing, blessing. I'm blessed right now. I'm blessed. Whatever the situation or the circumstance, I'm blessed. And I thank God for it. When I, when, I'm, when I have, I'm blessed. When I have not, I'm blessed. When I, you will say how you have when you have not, I'm blessed. Because I know God is working on a blessing for him because I am his son. And he's not going to let his son down. Somebody say amen this morning. He's not going to let his son, his daughter down when you're walking for a closer to walk with thee. Walk close with him. Be close with him. Allow him to bless you. Allow him to change your life. To change your life that you might be a blessing to some woman's to some man, to some boy and some girl, that your lifestyle, your acts and the deeds that you have done will change somebody's life. I, I'm, 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 I'm one of my old preachers from down south, and those songs used to get me. It says, if I can help somebody as I pass along, my living shall not be in vain. I don't want my living to be in vain because I want to help. Lord, use me. Lord, use me to help somebody as I pass, hallelujah, along, somebody say alone, along these ways to help somebody. And when, when you say help somebody, that's to be a blessing. I did not get where I'm here, where I am today. Somebody came along beside me to help me to get where I'm going. And the Holy Ghost said we have a paraclete. The Holy Spirit will come by you when nobody else is there and lead you along the narrow way. Help us. He came as a helper. And I go back to the beginning. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And I'm saying the world. The world was full of sin. He came into a sinful world. He loved a sinful person such as me, such as you. He died for you. He said, I come not in the world that the world might be condemned, but that the world might be saved through me. Praise him this morning. Praise him this morning. Give him the honor and give him the glory. Just praise him this morning. Can you praise him with me this morning and believe that he's working for for better than you, that he's about to change your life? Can you praise him this morning? Can you praise him from the rising of the sun to the setting down of the same? Can you praise him with me this morning? Can you praise him even though you don't know where the help coming from? But I'm telling you, my help coming from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Can you praise him this morning? Can you tell somebody about Jesus? That he has blessed you. That he has blessed you. My brothers, we thank you this morning. We thank you this morning for being with us at this this Bethel Church. And I'm going to say it right now. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you need to receive him. This is important, especially, and it's always especially in any time. But so many people have gone on home with, with the corona and different other things. And people haven't been able to see some of their loved ones. And you don't know when your time, you don't know the day nor the hour when you're going to leave here. But I don't want you to leave here without Jesus. Do you believe that he died on that cross? On that old rugged cross on Calvary? Do you believe they let that cross down into the earth and they, they stretched him wide and he hung his head and he died but it wasn't about him hung and hanging his head and he died him, but it's that he rose up from the dead he rose up that we might rise up don't leave without receiving him as your Lord and say so he said if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has risen his son from the dead thou shalt be saved just praise him just praise him just praise him Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, bless Him.
blessed Savior, He's worthy, worthy to be praised. My brothers and sisters, there's going to be a number on here. If you need counseling or to talk to somebody, you just call that number. And somebody at the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church here in Pasadena, under the pastorship of Pastor John Terry McCall, will be getting back to you. I didn't introduce myself. I am the Elder Larry Robertson, the assistant pastor here at this church. So God bless you. We're praying for you for those changes that needs to take place in your life. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And hallelujah, because he's worthy. To be praised. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him, oh, praise him, Jesus, ha! blessed Savior, Jesus, yes, blessed, blessed Savior, he's worthy, he's worthy, worthy to be praised. Thanks for joining the Bethel Pasadena Ministries broadcast. We're prayerful today's message blessed you immensely. If you'd like to support our ministry or have comments or questions, visit us at BethelPasadena.org. We hope to hear from you soon. Until next time, have a blessed day.